Great. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Again, please feel free to say hi in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Maybe as an icebreaker, tell us your favorite vegetable or your favorite fruit too. We'll open it up to a variety of options. I always like watermelon in the summer. Always delicious. It's like the best, like most refreshing summer snack. I have a plum tree in my backyard. So I love to pick fresh plums and peaches off my trees. Oh, no. Wait, that is awesome. Like fresh yes, fruit that you can just go them. snack on. Yes. I'm gonna I'm a country girl. <laughs> <laughs> Those are great fruits too. That's so cool. It's so hot. We don't really have we can go apple picking up here in the fall, but there's not like the heat's not really good for many fruits. Cool. Awesome. So we'll get started in a moment, but welcome everyone. Excited to have you here. Awesome. Hi, Tamara. Great. Yeah, we were just saying we love Brussels. Brussels sprouts is my favorite vegetable too, with um, some like balsamic and cheese. So very nice to meet you. Thank you for sharing. Awesome, great. So hi everyone. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. We're gonna get started um, in a few moments. Just letting everyone straggle in because it's about 140 right now. So we'll get started, but feel free to keep asking questions in the chat throughout the presentation. Um, we'd love to answer them as we go too. So um, let's get started. So today we're gonna to be talking about three easy ways to mix code and play. So we have some fun games throughout the session as well as we're gonna hear from Angela who is a librarian about how she's been mixing um, play into her classroom. So we'll start off with some quick introductions. So if you want to start, Angela. Hi, my name is Angela Brown, and I am the librarian at South Euless Elementary. That's in Euless, Texas. <laughs> um, we love Splat. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And then I'm Marissa. I'm the digital marketing specialist at Unreleased Studios, the creator of Unreleased Splats, which we'll also dive into a little bit later on as well. So to start off, um, if you want to write in the chat, what is your experience so far with block-based coding? Give you a few moments there to type. And then the other question is, as you're typing to, you can think of what coding tools and resources are you currently using in your classes? Amazing. So I'll leave you a few moments, but feel free to keep writing and we can move on um, to our first game of the day. So we're going to start off with some quiz show. So quiz show is a Jeopardy style game, which is really great when you're first introducing block coding to your students for the first time. It makes it fun without really diving deep into the code. So I'm going to pull that game up really quick and we'll do a few rounds of quiz show. So let's present this. Um, so Angela, do you want to pick the first question? Sure. How about vocab for 600? Awesome. So click right here. So function, what statement about function is, is false? A, a function can be used multiple times in a single program. B, a function can hold as many blocks as, you, as you'd like. C, a function can only hold one block at a, one type of block or D, a function can be named orange sky bacon 234. So in the chat, let us know which one you think is false about functions. Give you a few moments to read over the question. Got some answers brewing, CSC. Got a lot of these popular. <laughs> Great. 
So let's see, see if you guys were right. So C is the correct answer. Great job, everyone. Um, so everyone gets 600 unruly splats bucks for that round. Um, moving on to another one. Does anyone in the chat want to pick the next one? You can write it in the chat or unmute yourself and let us know. Find that bug. Find that bug for how much? 1,000. Ooh. Let's do it. <laughs> I love the bravery. Mm -hmm. Great. So move one block to play note 68 for five seconds. So this one, you're going to either want to move one of these blocks, A, B, C, or D, and then move it somewhere else on the code to play note 68 for five seconds. Definitely a tricky one, but I'll give you a few seconds to look over the code. So if you want to maybe write in the chat which um, letter block you think we're going to move, and then maybe we can all look together to see where it's, where it's going to be put. So I see a move D. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because it has 68 in it. So we have to move it somewhere maybe where it says play note then you want to play it for five seconds. So anyone want to guess where we're going to move the block D? No, move to A. Yeah, maybe we can say, let's take a look. Yeah, so pretty close. So we want to move 68 up to play note 68, and then it will delay it for five seconds at the bottom. So that's how you play the note for five seconds. So great job. That was a really tricky one. Um, any takers for let's do one more. You can either write in the chat or you can speak up if you want. And unmute yourself. It does what for 400? Sure. Let's see. So what does this code do? Pick one true answer. So it's either A, when the program starts, all the splats light up red and play a doorbell sound. B, when the program starts, splat one lights up red and plays a splat sound. Or C, when the program starts, splat one lights up red and splat two plays a doorbell sound. So I'll give you a minute to look at that code and then put your guess in the chat. And this one's pretty straightforward <laughs> like the other one. <laughs> so I get a C. So I see one C. Any other guesses before I show the answer? I see a lot of C's. So let's see what's that's right. Also here to note too, we have a little timer. So you could always click on this and give your students like 60 seconds to put their answers in if you were doing this, doing this in the classroom. But let's take a look. So see, when program starts, spot one lights up red and spot two plays a doorbell sound. So you guys all seemed to know that because you can see here when the program starts, lights spot one with color red and then the doorbell sound on spot two. Great. So we can go back now. Um, so like I said earlier, this is a great game to introduce to your students when you're first starting block coding for the first time. This is also a great lesson plan because you don't need access to um, our, our Splats app or our Splats to use it. It's free to download right on our site. So I'm sharing the link with you guys right now if you ever wanna check it out and use it in your own classroom just for fun. Um, so moving on. Here we go. A little bit about Unruly Studios and our philosophy. So here at Unruly Studios, we're all about combining collaboration with computer science and physical movement. So with that, we came up with Unruly Splats. 
So students code their own games through our web app. Either you can use a Chrome browser or an iPad to code out your games on our app, and then they play the games out um, with their friends. So we have these virtual, we have these physical splats that light up, make sound, collect points. So students can stop on them or press on them, and they make all sorts of collaborative games together, like relay races, whack-a-mole, obstacle courses, dance parties anything you can imagine, you can kind of do with splats. So it's a lot of fun. So what we like to say when you're first starting to use splats for the first time is the rules for the game are the rules for the code. So if it's your first time coding, so you, we want you to start off simple. So choose the game that you want to play, write the rules out to that game, and then use those rules to build your code. So students can use um, use those rules to build their code out right on our Splats app, which looks just like this. So we have all different types of programs for blocks right here, so they can build out their code and then even test their code out using our virtual Splats here on the left. So, you know, it can make sure the game plays the way they want it to, make sure there's no bugs in the code before you bring it out to life with um, your full classmates using the physical Splats. So here's a quick video of kind of what splats look like in action. So this is uh, our game called Four Splats, but it's really just the traditional game Four Corners with our splats included. So here we go. Again. Again. All right, go back. Again, again. Should we do it again for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it for you ready? Okay, get ready. Go. Which one went up? Oh, oh. So yeah, that's a take on the game Four Corners, as you can see. Um, instead of having a corner go out though, we've seen educators modify it in all sorts of ways. Like this way they added more physical movement with the jumping jacks, but I've seen other educators make that group do maybe a math problem or like I'm a vocab word. So all sorts of things. But moving on to Angela, do you wanna tell us about your school and how you use splats there? Yes, um, again, I am a librarian. I'm at a pre-K through sixth grade campus. So we have a wide range of students using the splats. Um, we all wanna have fun when we're learning. So that's the beautiful thing about splats. Students are moving and they're learning to code. In the library, I do a coding lesson with the students. Yes, as early as pre-K, we're doing coding and um, they enjoy it, they love it all the way up to sixth grade, they're coding also. But again, we're having fun while we're learning and there's movement. The library also has extra splats so teachers can come in and check them out. So students can use them in the classroom. They're not just bought for the library. Um, our splat team on our campus consists of me, the library, the music teacher, the PE teacher, the art teacher, and we have two grade level teachers also. So we have splats in our spaces at all times where they can be used. So the music teacher, of course, is coding with music and PE, they're already, already moving in there anyway. So why not implement something that has fun sounds and colors and lights and all that great stuff. So we use splats a variety of different ways in the library. Again, I use it for coding. Um, we also use it school-wide for our house challenges. Amazing. Yeah, it's great that there's such a variety at your school that are using splats. So that's awesome. Yes. Um, what splats games have you used in your classroom so far? So Angela is one of our newer unruly educators, but she's been stomping up a storm at that school and they've already got a ton of stomps in. So I'd love to hear what type of games you've been up to at your school. For the younger students, whack-a-mole is definitely the favorite game. And I love that um, you have to click on, stomp on the splat when it turns purple. So it's also teaching our little pre-K babies color recognition. And of course you have to be fast. So whenever the splat is purple, you have to stomp it and you get points. 
Um, the other game that we played was race in place. And uh, my goodness, the splat has a timer built in on the game and the whistle blows on the splat on the um, computer, the Chromebook. And so the students know, hey, we need to start running and they run until their time ends. Amazing. Yeah, so then we have um, a quick game right here from Angela's students where it was a house contest of the race and place game. So I'll play this really fast for you guys. Can you hear the volume? It's low. All right, this week's game, we'll be using our unruly splats to play a game. It's a program called Fast Feet. Let's see which house wins. So the students are racing against each other to see who can stomp on the splats the most to earn the most points. And on this video, the boy that you see there he is racing you can barely see his feet move we have the blue team in first place with 42. great job then we have the green team in second place with 26. Good job. then we have the yellow team in third place with 24. Woo! and then the red team in fourth place with 19. Woo! Good job, competitors. So again, that was just one example of us using our splats for our house contest. Yeah, I love how you take kind of such a simple game and gamify it even more by making it a contest that like adds to the challenge of the game. So it's yes. like a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> And the beautiful part was we did not have to code that when it was already in the um, plans, the Splat plans. <laughs> yeah, so the Splat app has a bunch of um, pre-built games in that you can load right up. So it's really easy for um, an educator who's not familiar with the code um, to use it. So we have a lot of PE teachers who do that and like other educators as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then over time students learn and then you can modify those codes and maybe like challenge yourself a little more or change the color of the mole to purple from purple to like maybe blue or something like that. Cool. So moving on. Um, Angela, what advice do you have for teachers who are new to computer science? Don't be afraid. <laughs> Um, again, the block coding is pretty simple. You just have to move them into place. So don't be afraid. And the students, once they get involved, they will get it. I'm I was learning along with the students. So that was the best part of it. Um, create and test a simple code first. So ex for example, when we started, we did with the starting one and you just had to drag over to the splat mat when splat one is pressed and then you tell the computer exactly what you wanted to do. And we just focused on lights and sounds. So they brought over a light and whichever color they wanted to use, that's fine. We couldn't use random because I wanted them to know specifically if their color popped up and sounds, they couldn't use random on that one also, but there are some great sounds. I like doorbell personally. And if you hear the sounds, when you hear raspberry, uh, the fifth grade boys love that sound. <laughs> um, it sounds like a fart, but <laughs> they loved it and it kept them engaged. That was the beauty of it. It kept them engaged. Also assign a number to each splat. If you have multiple splats out, if you only have um, two, three, that's fine. But if you have multiple splats out, assign a number. So when the students are doing their coding, they'll, they'll remember, oh, this is my number. And allow the students to just explore and have fun. Honestly, when we put this, um, type in the Splat app, once the students receive their profile name, the profile names are really silly. Like my profile name is grapefruit shrimp, but they come in like mint tiger, tomato snake, mushroom whale. I mean, it just created laughter from the beginning. 
So they need to remember their profile name. They need to remember which number splat they have and then just let them have fun with it and let them learn. Yeah, that's great. It's also, I think the fun is a really important aspect because when they're engaged and when they're having fun and maybe there are some silly moments in yeah. there, which is good, they're learning kind of without really realizing it. And I think that's one of the better parts is like, it's all just a game and fun for them, but whether they know it or not, they're learning a little bit about code along the way too. Exactly. And they wanted to know how to, how do you make that sound? So, I mean, they're questioning each other also. <laughs> Yeah, and then they get so excited that they want to share it with their friends and then teach their friends something too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. So um, the next question I have for you is, I know you've been in a hybrid learning situation this school year. So how have SPLATs um, supported you through that um, teaching process? No, I am so thrilled that we had SPLATs um, this year because before when I taught coding, we used a Dash robot which is awesome, it really is. But how do you teach them to use that virtually? They have nothing really to base, you know, to see the feedback. So with Splats, they have the virtual Splat and they loved it. And even our in-person students were using the virtual Splat because they could see the immediate um, response. Okay, I coded it correctly, awesome. And if they coded something and it didn't work, it was like, okay, go back and try it again. And they would keep trying, keep trying until they got it. But our virtual students would be able, if they created something really awesome and they wanted to share it, they could save it, tell a student on campus, this is my username. Hey, you know, use this one. And they named the game. And someone on campus could actually use their code with their virtual, with their physical splat. So that was very exciting because I can tell the students over and over how to do this, how to do this, but to actually have them working the splat, that was the most beneficial thing. And um, again, they're communicating with each other, virtual and in-person, um, which it was a challenge trying to teach to those on the screen while teaching the live babies also, but they worked so well together with the splats they were able to interact with each other. It was awesome. And our students that were in person, even when they went home, they had their devices, they had internet connection. So they would continue to work on splats at their house. So. Yeah, that's really great to hear. It's awesome to really hear that there was like some collaboration between the virtual and in-person students with the game creation. It's great that yeah. they were like able to share that and pass that along. So that's really awesome. Um, yeah, and then this is also what our virtual like um, splats pad looks like. So if you ever want to design a game virtually, this is kind of um, the platform you can use. And then this is a quick little game demonstration of the whack-a-mole game Angela mentioned earlier. So the goal is to click all the purple splats and not the green to hit the moles. So awesome, um, moving on. So more about your students. How have you seen um, growth in your students with using splats? Again, having the um, interaction between virtual and in-person has been awesome, been amazing. It's they're independent because they're creating their own code, but then they want to share it. So there's that collaboration piece and it's like, oh, this is awesome. Um, Students understand they're in control. You're programming this. It can only do what you tell it to do. So when they try it and it doesn't work, it's like, oh, no, 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 don't get bummed out. Try it again, ask a friend. And they can ask someone who's next to them in person or they can ask someone virtually. I mean, we're all doing our splats. Um, so when it does work, it's like, awesome. I love the immediate feedback. That's the best part. So it really... Um, when they're doing it um, in person, but they're doing the virtual splat still, it's like, ah. So either way they're doing it, they're learning. It's just rewarding to see it all come together. Yeah, that's really great. I think um, too, just learning those social emotional learning skills along the way too, because you are working with your other classmates, um, whether it's virtually or in person and kind of sharing your ideas and um, kind of using each student's own specific strengths to like create those games is really great to see too. Yes. 
So, so far with your journey um, as an unruly educator, what have been your three biggest takeaways with using um, spots for STEM learning? I love the creativity. Um, once the students are successful, they begin to add more code to theirs. And it's like, do it, do it, make it big. And they do. And one of our virtual students, and I wish I had that, um, his code name so I could share it with you, but he created a song, a raspberry song. So it was, I want to say to the tune of like, oh, McDonald had a farm or something, but it was all the raspberry sound, which again, sounds like a fart. But he was being creative and the, it cracked everyone else up and he shared it. So just, it's like, who would have thought he would come up with a song? <laughs> based on that but the excitement and the engagement all the students um, that successfully code they're able to stomp on their splat um, for our pre-k students and kinder students when they checked out their book and they you know they returned their book they were able to step stomp on the splat and it's like yay so um this is the excitement also once one group of students have been to the library, they get to go back to class. And as they're passing the same grade level in the hall, they're like, what did you do in the library today? And they'll share with them. So when they come into the library, they're excited about it already. And I haven't seen them because um, we have four classes each grade level. So they're already excited when they step into the library because they know we're gonna be engaging with the splats today. Okay, yay. And they've seen it on the house challenge. So that was even better. And then the ease of coding, it's block coding. So all you have to do is just slide the pieces in to the puzzle and it works, press run and it works. So that's, those are the three takeaways. It's fun, it's easy. And I love the excitement. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I think too, we'd love to say you don't have to be an expert in code to use the code. Um, so we have all those pre-built games that you can just load right up onto the screen if you're not familiar, but it's also great to just learn as you go with your students. We've seen like, you don't have to know everything, kind of challenge them to problem solve and then you'll learn all together, which is great. Definitely. And even the preloaded games, they easily go in and change the color or the sound or, you know, make little tweaks to it. So it's, yeah, it's, you can do it. Yeah, just the familiarity with the code over yes. time. And then they'll be like, then they'll start questioning themselves and be like, how do I do this? And then they'll wanna learn um, maybe how to change the music or change the sound or change the um, variable. Yes. Great, so what else? I know there seems like your students are very excited about a lot of things about spots, which is awesome, but what other, um, you know, what are their fan favorites about spots? Um, of course, the names, when they create their profile, the silly names gets them, I mean, from the very beginning. But again, raspberry is the favorite sound overall. Um, not so much for the teachers. They didn't enjoy hearing it so much. So sometimes they were like, okay, choose a different sound. But in the library, it's like, whatever makes you happy, go for it. Um, right now, whack-a-mole is the favorite game. So we have them sort of set up the way you had on the virtual splat that same little pattern. And so they love running and stumping on the purple splats and those are the, around them cheering them on. It's over here, it's over here, you know, it's the library is not quiet. Um, like when I visited the library, it's rather loud in there, but we are, we're having fun while we're learning. But um, students love to change the background on the splats. Uh, I noticed earlier you had the basketball court on the background. Um, they've used the one that looks like the little splat cat that's what we call them, the splat cats that eats word loading. There's a yeah. background with him on there also that they love to use. Um, and just generally overall, the students have enjoyed every aspect of the splats. So Great. we know we'll be using them a lot more this next school year also. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we can um, dive into the app really quick at the end too, so I can show you kind of the audience's backgrounds really fast. Great. So um, you've done so much with SPLATS already, but what is your next steps with SPLATS and future plans? Okay. Well, I know our school as a whole will definitely continue to use the SPLATS for the house challenges. Um, I will continue to use them in the library for coding lessons 
And we only had them a short amount of time. We received them in March. So after spring break is when we got to use them. So we'll have more students creating <laughs> um, addition, in addition to using the lessons that are already there, the activities that are already there, I'll have them creating more things. Um, I'm gonna encourage our staff members to check out the splats also. We had one SPED class, the students absolutely loved it. She checked them out, they used them in class. So I want more classes to become familiar with them. I don't want it to be just a library thing or just a music or PE thing. I want it to be just everyone in the school using them. But um, the games and projects are already in there loaded. So I want the students to feel comfortable using those and then creating their own games. Yeah. That's really great. I think um, kind of making it the community school wide tool and kind of building a community around SPLATS is a really great way to get everyone involved and kind of um, incorporate STEM throughout the day, just not during that designated period of teaching STEM time. So that's awesome. Um, do you also want to explain what house challenges are? Oh, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, yes, we have the house contest. Uh, house challenges um, once every, once a week. Um, we have a house, the houses at our school. So Credibilis, Fidus, or as we commonly call them, red house, blue house, yellow house, green house. And the students are trying to earn points so they can win the house challenge um, or add points for when they have the house challenge. So as my son said, he said, it's kind of like Harry Potter. And I'm like, in a sense, but we're giving them points for simply being kind. If someone loses something and someone turns it into the lost and found, they can earn points for their house for doing that. If someone is just polite, they can earn points. So the students know where they are um, on house challenge days. They know how many points they have, but when we complete a house challenge, it can bump them up. So a class, a group that was behind could actually win the house challenge <laughs> and win the contest. And we have flags that match those. So when say yellow wins, their flag hangs on the flagpole underneath the American Texas, and then we have their flag colors. So it's really, it's another way to build community within the, within the school. Yeah, that's a really awesome um, program you guys do. It's like a great incentive for students. And I love, yeah, I was going to say, it seems like a really big community builder and kind of like that team environment that you're all like in this together. So that's awesome. Great. Exactly. So, um, oh yeah, moving on, um, we have another game we want to show you today. So it's called Lucky Splats. So um, this is a more kind of advanced code game. Um, where you use the code unlike quiz show where it's just really a good introductory tool. So Lucky Splats is based off of a game that's played around Lunar New Year um, in Vietnam. So it's kind of a chance game. So the traditional game is you roll dice and you kind of place wagers on what um, number you think is going to appear. But with Lucky Splats, we use the color of the splats. So instead of the number on the die, we use the color of the splats and students will make guesses on which colors they think are going to show up. Um, so I'll pull up that code to show you right now. Um, so the quick code is here. Oh, sorry, I cut. I'll pull up the portal. So here is where we have um, our portal login. So you can access the app right through here. And then the web app will load with um, like Angelo said, the cat that eats all the loading letters. <laughs> um, so we can log into our game. Oh, those are the names. <laughs> yeah, and then those are the fun names. So if you go over here to projects, this is where she was mentioning all the projects that can be saved. So I have Lucky Splats saved over here, you can load it right up and then the code um, loads itself. So we can move this over so you can all see it. So for this game, like I said, three random splats will um, appear with different colors. So just to show you a quick um, practice run of what it looks like when you click run, you'll see what happens. Great. 
Great. So here you can see we had a blue, a green, and a scion. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like. But then you, before you would do that, you would make your guess your wagers on what you think is going to show up. So everyone starts with eight tokens, and then you'll place your wagers, and then you'll see what was rolled, and then you'll see if you lost tokens or if you won tokens for the next round. So it's a great way to practice probability and kind of like simple addition too. So let's play one round. Does anyone want to put in the chat what um, they want to guess for? We could do red yellow green blue cyan or purple so anyone want to place um bets for us we have eight tokens total i'll give you a moment to if anyone wants to speak up i saw a blue great how many do you want to put on blue so we can either use all eight tokens or we can only use a few if we want to play the game safe um oh we want to go big so six on blue Anyone else want to put um, a wager in? So we have two more tokens remaining. Give you a second. Feel free to chime in. How about one on yellow? Okay, we can do one on yellow. Split up our odds a little bit. And then maybe um, we can do one on green i'm nervous <laughs> cool so let's see so now we can run the code again so it was a yellow green and red so then you can go back to your code to your um graph over here and then you do one yellow one green and one red so we didn't lose all our tokens. Um, unfortunately, didn't get the blue. So you can see at the ending of the round, we have four more tokens. So we're still in the game. So um, it adds your math over too. So you can just play your rounds with your students. So we have this available to download. Um, you can print these out. You can do them on virtually, whatever you like. So that's just a fun game to kind of introduce those coding skills in a gamified way. Um, and I'll quickly show you too what we were talking about with our virtual splats pad. So if your students are virtual, we have this pad where you can kind of play out your games and kind of um, plan out what you want them to look like in real life or play them out here. So then we had all these different backgrounds, the colors, and then as well as the really fun backgrounds like the cat, um, the bloopers cat right here and the basketball court in outer space. So a lot of fun things you can do. So moving on, um, I just quickly want to touch upon what is included in Unruly membership. So we have our hardware, which is the physical splats, the software, which is the splats app, which you just saw. And then the third thing is we have our school success team. So our school success team works with teachers throughout the school year. We offer those onboarding, those weekly onboardings for teachers. So if Angela had, let's say her PE teacher really wanted to get into splats, they could go to a weekly session um, at any time to kind of learn a little bit more about them before diving in with their students. Um, other things we have is we're always working to make better lesson plans, slide decks, and community activities. So right now we're actually working with some educators on math games. So we have three math activities coming out with, um, they involve the human calculator, place values, and adding in addition. So we always love to work with our teachers to create content that is helpful for them. Um, and then additionally, we have unlimited seats for our students and teachers, so you can always add on whoever you want. And then we have a warranty for our physical slots. So if one was to break, um, they're extremely durable, we'll, but we would replace it if something were to happen. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Our memberships are great. Anything else, Angela, you want to add about Unruly Splats memberships? No, I love that um, with the membership that we have training. So I've had one session and then I have another session tomorrow. So it's, I like that it's continuous. Yeah, that's really great. Um, it's great too, because they're with our like Splat, Splat, Splat specialist, Ryan, who's like kind of will see the community and really know your problems. And he's always there to help. Um, so great. Um, yeah, so that was really wrapping it up now. Feel free to follow us on our social platforms. We're really active on Twitter and love to engage with 
educators through that platform and share our unruly stories there. Um, and then other than that, we're gonna open it up to some Q and A. So please feel free to write any questions you have in the chat and I'll feel free to answer them. I saw a question about um, cost. So our memberships, there's a variety of our memberships and we really base them around um, how big your school is and how many educators you think will be using them. Um, so it can range between 1200 to 3600 depending on um, your school size. I can drop um, a link in the chat too if you want to connect with one of our spot specialists on what your school price would be, you can set up a meeting with them too. But feel free to write any other questions. So we'd love to answer them. Um, we appreciate you sitting through our session. I hope you enjoyed um, all the games we played. I can also drop the lucky spots lesson plan in the chat too. I'm excited about trying that one. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, it was really great because it was made by someone on our team who grew up in Vietnam. So she based the game kind of off of her own childhood experiences, which is really cool. Yeah, I like that. Personal connection. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Feel free to write any questions, um, but if you don't have any questions, thanks for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day too. Thanks, Tamara. Thank you all for coming today. Amazing. Yeah, this is our cat, our spots cat. His name's Bloopers. <laughs> Bloopers. Okay. I yeah. need to remember that. I can tell because uh, splat cat to... just rhymes, you know. I like that though. But his official name is Bloopers. Which okay. Is really <laughs> and then the gorilla's name's Crash, but I don't think he's on our app, but we just have him posted sometimes. <laughs>